Welcome to series four, exploring Henry Thoreau and Walden. It's Paul Medeiros. I'm coming to you today from city of New Bedford, near my residence. Let's talk about Thoreau. We've learned from ancient and medieval authorities that contemplating must be the human function and that a life dedicated to contemplating must be the good life. And moreover, wisdom is the virtue of contemplating. If you're like me, you may be uncertain about this proposal. Uh, what exactly is contemplating? Um, is this a plausible proposal for most persons? I think it's very reasonable to be unsure about this ancient insight. That's the job of our new author, Henry Thoreau. Um, like you and I, Henry Thoreau studied ancient thought. He even translated uh, ancient Greek texts into English. And he decided to put their ideas into action. He attempted to live a life dedicated to thinking. And his book, Walden, is one summary of his efforts. Henry Thoreau proposes the intellectual life. Here's our definition of the intellectual life. Human life 100% committed to some or all areas of intellectual activity and virtues. Let's meet Henry Thoreau. Henry Thoreau was born in 1817 in Massachusetts. For a short time, he lived and his family lived in Keene, New Hampshire, and then they returned to Massachusetts and settled in Concord, Massachusetts. At that time, Concord was viewed as a center of culture and interesting people. Uh, it was known as the Athens of New England. Like many young persons, Henry Thoreau uh, desired to be a teacher when he grew up. And following his brother, he went to Harvard College in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Like some of you, Henry Thoreau graduated and uh, won his dream job. He was appointed the head teacher of Concord Public Schools. There, in fact, was only one head teacher uh, at the school, Henry Thoreau. And uh, tragically or remarkably, uh, within a few weeks, Henry Thoreau resigned his job. I'm a person who grew up in Massachusetts and even in elementary school, we heard some of the legends of this person, Henry Thoreau. Uh, the resigning of his first job is one of those legends. Uh, Henry Thoreau had a classroom of maybe about 50 uh, persons, men and, or young boys and, and uh, girls. And uh, Henry Thoreau, uh, when he was hired, was very clear that he did not believe in corporeal punishment. However, uh, young persons can be rowdy in the classroom, uh, and the school committee approached Henry Thoreau after a few weeks and asked him to discipline the students uh, using corporeal punishment. Henry Thoreau uh, refused to continue, uh, resigned his job. An important uh, turning point in Henry Thoreau's life, uh, this is the year 1837, uh, shortly after, Henry Thoreau uh, ran into his famous neighbor, uh, Mr. Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, who recommended that Henry Thoreau start writing in a journal. And they began a lifelong friendship. Our work, uh, the, the work of Henry Thoreau's that we'll be looking at together uh, is Walden, and we will look at chapters one through three together. Those are the chapters where our author provides his philosophical ideas and arguments. What's unique about Henry Thoreau's writing in Walden is his focus on human life. He's not as much interested in human persons as he is in the topic of human life. 
I would like to now share with you the three learning objectives to guide your, your reading activity. First learning objective, to identify Henry Thoreau's mysterious activity introduced in chapter one and again in chapter two. Second learning objective, to distinguish being good and doing good according to the author. That's toward the end of chapter one. And third objective, to learn Henry Thoreau's two proposals about the good life. One, living simply, and two, intellectual life. Life 100% committed to some or all areas of intellectual activity and virtue.